Minute answer questions are quick tests of your understanding of conceptual content from the chapter. If you've got a question about a certain one of these minute answer queries, watch the bottom left hand side of the screen here uh, for when that number comes up. We're going to take this from the top. Which is the older concept, the idea of quality as conformance or quality as improvement? Older, quality of conformance. Conformance. Arguably the oldest definition of quality. Quality can be defined a couple different ways. Arguably, conformance was the first idea that came to us, and you can see the idea of setting up specifications and then assuring the conformance to specifications. You can trace that all the way back to like a medieval craft guilds. All right, next question. Do control charts assist in monitoring quality as conformance or quality as improvement? Oh, again. Quality as conformance. Because what control charts do is they set limits on the degree that, to which you can vary from the specification, which is that they define the idea of what conformance is and whether you're conforming. Um, they don't necessarily, necessarily track whether in fact your product is improving over time. All right, next question. Which typically poses a greater challenge in designing and monitoring product quality? Production of a good or provision of a service? Important principle, provision of a service. You say, um, all right, why? Why would it be more difficult product quality if the product is a service? Because services are intangible, so it is just tougher to literally measure the product to begin with, let alone monitor its quality. All right, so that's where that principle comes from. Next question. A correlation coefficient of negative 0.95 indicates what? How would you interpret that? Strong, negative, correlation. The correlation coefficient, when you complete that big formula, your result should be some number between negative 1 and 1. Negative 1 represents absolutely perfect negative correlation, the strongest that you can get, and then 1 represents absolutely perfect positive correlation, the strongest it could get at that end. Negative 0.95 is pretty close to negative 1, so we say a very strong negative correlation. Next question. Does a correlation coefficient indicate the strength of a curvilinear, a linear, or an inverse relationship? Linear. That is something we need to remember about correlation coefficients. They are a measure of the linear relationship of between two sets of data. There may be a, a very powerful and interesting curvilinear relationship, like if you plotted it between two sets of data, and your correlation coefficient would totally miss that fact. That's not what it's designed to express or to look for. All right, linear relationship. Next question. Which tool is most useful in Pareto analysis, a scatter plot or a histogram? The answer is histogram. Why? Because Pareto analysis is the pursuit of the significant few, right? Figuring out who they are versus the trivial many, as Pareto put it. Okay, you're the 80-20 rule. You're looking for the 20% of factors that are responsible for 80% of your problems. Now, of the two tools, if you were looking for that, right? What factors here are very, very powerful? They're the 20%. A scatter plot just expresses the relationship between two things, or maybe the lack of relationship as an illustration. But a histogram counts up the frequency within categories. So it's a histogram that would reveal if some certain category right, were uh, occurring or contributing or whatever with more frequency than others. All right, So it would be more helpful in Pareto analysis. Next question. Is a fishbone diagram 
or control chart more likely to result from the key is brainstorming session? The answer is the fishbone diagram. Fishbone diagram, also known as a cause and effect diagram, is a brainstorming tool. It is very helpful when a group of people are trying to combine their insight in solving a problem. Uh, okay, a control chart is a very, very helpful tool, but a control chart is actually ultimately the chart itself, the result of somebody taking the data and using certain formulas to figure out what the control limits are. It's not likely that a group of people in a brainstorming session would have done that. All right, next question. Which is a better example of employee empowerment? Employee empowerment, a quality circle or a causal model? Oh, obviously, quality circle. Quality circle is a group of employees who pause in their usual work and discuss how to better improve their operations. And they do this on a continual basis. The group's called a quality circle. Okay, it's an example of employee empowerment. Uh, it, uh, more to the point, a causal model, a, a, a causal model is generally mathematical. It's, it's, just a, it's just an analytical entity or concept. It really doesn't have anything to do with employee empowerment. Oh, all right, next question. Does remanufacturing of a product indicate cradle to cradle or cradle to grave design model? Answer, cradle to cradle. Cradle to cradle. Because remanufacturing implies that there is a product, it's reached the end of its, inf its, its usefulness, and there is some process for drawing it back into the production system, remanufacturing it into maybe not exactly the same product, but something similar and something useful. That is cradle to cradle. Cradle's the start, and then back to the start again. It's a new product again. Now, you may have designed a product such that you have given good thought to its proper disposal like here's how it'll be used and then in the design this is how it should be disposed of that is cradle to grave oh okay next question if a component is deliberately left out of the main assembly of some product is this the DMAIC cycle or delayed differentiation at work? The answer is delayed differentiation because that is the explanation for why you might would leave a part out, differentiation. The DMAIC cycle refers to Six Sigma methodology, um, design, measure, analyze, improve, and control, straight from my notes. It's a methodology. It's very, very useful, but it doesn't explain why you would leave a component out of assembly. Right. Why would you logically leave one component out of the main assembly of something? Because what you plan to do is add it later, just before you give it to the customer, so that you can customize just that particular component to the customer's needs. Delayed differentiation. Ah, 11. Does one broken egg within a carton of one dozen eggs represent natural or assignable variation among the eggs? Answer, assignable. Assignable variation. Okay, natural variation is variation that we expect in a process. Like eggs, if you look at them closely enough in the carton, are going to be just slightly different sizes. That's only natural. Assignable variation is some variation, some difference, that there's a distinct reason that that happened. Okay, if one of the eggs in the carton is broken, there was a reason. I mean, something broke it. It didn't form that way, so that's what makes it assignable variation. All right, last problem. Identifying the correlations between customer perception and design specification is the core of what analytical tool? This is kind of definitional. QFD analysis. That is a description of QFD analysis or what's the QFD stand for? Quality function deployment.